Hey everybody, in this video we're talking about monopolies and per unit taxes. And here's the reason guys, monopolies have pricing power. In fact, let me kind of increase the scope of the video just a little bit here. Monopolies have market power. That is the idea of a monopoly is they have what we call market power. Now you could have monopolistically competitive firms and guess what, they also have market power. So pretty much anything I'm saying in here, yes, applies to monopolies, but really any firm that has market power. And if you have market power, that means you have pricing pricing power, right? Your demand curve that you face as a firm is not completely elastic, okay? There's some inelasticity which gives you pricing power. And so because of that pricing power, we may be tempted to regulate. And one of the ways that we can regulate that firm with a market-based regulation is a per unit tax. And we wanna talk about whether or not that is an appropriate uh, policy intervention when we see market power. But let's first just kind of get our graph up to speed for a firm that has market power. So I've got a monopoly or monopolist of competition, really doesn't matter. I've got my downward sloping demand curve. I'm assuming no price discrimination. So I've got MR twice the slope of the demand curve, okay? So MR is not demand because again, no price discrimination. So what I wanna do always when I've got my big three, and these are my big three, MC, MR, and demand, is I wanna see, I wanna find price and output, uh, but in the opposite order, start always with output, right? You go. MCMR, that is gonna provide you with the output. So go ahead and bring that down. There's the profit maximizing output. And now you take that output up to the demand curve because what we're basically saying is what is the highest price the firm can charge and sell this level of output? What tells me that is the demand curve. So there we go, we get price monopolist right there. And so you can see that pricing power, we're charging a price above the MRMC at our level of output. Now, here is one of the big takeaways when you have market power. Market power is a type of market failure. If we leave market power alone, and we maybe should if the market power is not that strong, by the way, but if you have market, if you have market power, if you leave market power alone, we're gonna fail to achieve allocated efficiency. We're gonna fail to produce the combination or, or the amount of goods or this particular good that would provide max social surplus. We're gonna allocate resources to the production of the good. As you can see, this is my Q, and what's my Q opt? Well, my QOPT, if we have no externalities, assuming no externalities, is where my MC, which would be my MSC, if there's no externalities, and my demand, which would be my MSB, intersect. I'm gonna bring that down. It does not need to, I'm not sure if I did a good job or a bad job, I think it's bent a little bit. It absolutely does not, I don't know, it still looks a little bit shaky, does not need to hit the horizontal axis right where MR is crossing. So I always like wanna make, make sure that we're clear on that point. But now we can find that dead weight loss, right? Because again, this is the MSB, this is the MSC. So we've got all these uh, goods that could be sold for which the marginal social benefit is greater than the marginal social cost. So this would be our dead weight loss. All right. And so we, Hey, we got this allocative inefficiency going on. Um, and again, we've got this pricing power. Hey, maybe we want to regulate this market power, this monopoly. So we decide to go with a per unit tax. And yes, that per unit tax is going to give us some government revenue. So that government revenue could allow us to do some things that the government uh, may need to do because of public goods or pop positive directionalities, okay? But, but that per unit tax, guys, that's gonna change the marginal cost, right, of providing the good. It's gonna increase the marginal cost. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw in a new curve, reaching off to the side right there. I'm gonna bring in, you know, whatever that per unit tax might be. I'm just gonna go with a random amount right there. So I bring in marginal cost plus the per unit tax okay so all i've done is added in that per unit tax at all levels of output that tax you should see as a as a vertical right there right so that's the amount of the tax now here is the thing though if this is the regulation that we go with we got to go back to the beginning we got to find our output again and where is our output well it's where mr equals mc so there's my mc there's my mr that's where they now equal so guess what output is going to decrease. So there's my Q tax, all right? And when that output decreases, that means the size of this dead weight loss is just gonna get bigger, bigger, 
and bigger, whatever. That's not the best, not the prettiest. But anyhow, you can see that triangle getting bigger. There it is. There's the MSB, the MSC. We just have more mutually beneficial transactions not taking place. We're becoming more allocatively uh, inefficient. Okay, we're gonna we were underproducing good. Now we're gonna underproduce the good even by more because again, a per unit tax changes that marginal cost curve by shifting it up, which means basically the supply curve is shifting left, and we're going to to supply less of the good. So generally, economists, this is not the way they're gonna go. When they see market power, they're not gonna go with the per unit tax. There's other ways we can regulate it. I just wanna talk about one potential one. When this one doesn't isn't gonna help out on the dead weight loss, but it certainly would cut into the profits if that's, if that's a worry of society, okay? And that would be a lump sum tax. If we did a lump sum tax, what that would do is it would increase the ATC, and by increasing the ATC, you would reduce profits for or the monopolist. And again, the government would have revenue to do things that we might want the government to do with that revenue. And here's the thing, the lump sum tax will not change output. And why won't it change output? Because it's not a per unit tax. And so kind of just to be incredibly messy, right? We are back to our original MC. So we do a lump sum tax. This curve is not going to go anything, anywhere. The only thing that's going to change is the ATC curve. It's going to go up. Again, profits get reduced. Again, we're not advocating for lump sum taxes either. There's still other ways that we can choose to intervene when we see market power. And again, if the market power is really small, you know, one thing is if it's just a monopolistically competitive industry, and if it is a very competitive industry, that's okay. You know, that monopolistic competition is driving that drive for abnormal profits, brings a lot of innovation, and maybe we just want to leave it alone. But when we see monopoly, there is temptation to, to, to get in there and regulate. One of the regulations we might put forward is that per unit tax, but we're seeing besides some, the government getting some revenue, there's definitely some, some negatives. And the biggest negative is that dead weight loss getting bigger as the output decreases even more. Hope that makes sense to you. We'll talk to you in the next video.